Hello everyone, this is me Saranan Vajravel and I am happy to welcome to my channel One Touch BI. Today in our class we are going to learn how to extract foreground mask from the background model. This exercise we are going to solve with only the OpenCV package from Python. Here is how the background subtraction process is being carried out. You will have two sets of frames. The frame 1 will be background model and frame 2 will be current frame. If you look at between the background model and the current frame, the only difference what I notice is the both. So when you subtract the current frame from the background model and apply the threshold to make sure all the backgrounds are applied with block and the foreground with white, then you get the foreground mask what has been captured over here. This entire process we can achieve using two methods. On method 1, you can use the absolute difference of frame 1 minus frame 2. And in the method 2, we have the same functionality which is being embedded with OpenCV package. There are two functions available. The first one is create background subtractor KNN and the second one is create background subtractor MOG2. You can use either one of this whichever you feel is accurate for your exercise. But based on my trial, I found that KNN seems to be very impressive and removes the noise almost everything when it compared with MOG2. MOG2 captures even more details on the small dots. So it all depends with you that which method works for your recommend. I just leave it to you to pick up the one of the method but I'm going to show in my exercise today both the method KNN as well as MOG2 as well as from the method 1 absolute difference. Without much delay let's quickly head over to my Jupyter notebook. Let's name the program name with a comment line. Extract the foreground mask from the background. What are the prerequisite packages required for this exercise? We just need only open CV that is CV2 and I'm going to introduce a frame delay while reading the frame from one frame to another frame. How do I introduce the delay using the import time package? Let's import the package. Run this code. I don't see any error. We are good. And moving on to the next segment, we need to initialize the pre-recorded video or the live stream camera. The very first I'm going to show with the pre-recorded video. The command is remain same for opening the pre-recorded video and also to initialize the camera. So let's do that. CV2 dot video capture and within the parenthesis you provide the pre-recorded video file path along with the mp4 or avi or any extension of your video files. So here is my file dot slash dot dot slash videos and inside the video I have the video called iwaycourse.mp4. I'm good. I'm going to assign this output to the variable that's called video capture equal to this. I initialize the video capture variable. Now what is our next job? We need to read the frame by frame. Let me read the frame 1. Before that, how do we read the frames? Using the variable which you initialized for video capture use that video cap dot read this reads the frame one assign this output to the variable this is going to return two variables it's going to return the return comma frame i'll call the frame as frame one equal to this let's comment this read the frame 1. What is that written? 
I say the return is going to return whether it is true or false. Assume that you don't have any more frames left or frames are read. In that case, when you attempt to read, it is trying to read the next frame. Reads the next frame. If next frame is not available, what will happen? The return comes with false. Let me print and show you what is the return is going to hold in this case. Before that, let's make sure the video capture is been released because in the end of the program, we need to release the video capture. Release the video capture. It's very simple. With cap, that is video capture dot release. Okay, we did it. What I want to show it to you is what is that variable ret is going to hold. Print ret. Can you see the result? It returns true. That means there are frames available. So the frame has been read and the value is pausing true or false. Okay. Now I'll remove this. I just want to show what is that frame is going to hold. So what I'm going to do, we have the function called cv2 dot im show of frame one. When you attempt to show the image using the cv2 im show, we need to hold the frame until we press some key. For that, cv2 dot wait key of zero. When you press some key, only then you need to release all the windows. Because the IM show from OpenCV package is going to show the image in a window frame. I did a mistake. I have to introduce the window name. Let's have the window name as frame one. Okay. And let's release all the windows when the program ends. For that, we need to do cv2 dot destroy all windows. We are good. Let's run this code. The output has popped up in a window. Can you see the window name? The window name I gave is frame one and the first frame has been captured. We are good. Press any key. Now what I do, I'm going to read the second frame. For that, I have to repeat the command. Let's command this. Wait for any key to be pressed. Okay. And the set of lines what I copied from the frame one, I just change it to the frame two. So I'm going to read the second frame. Whenever I repeat the command video capture dot read off it's going to read the next frame next frame and keep on going okay so now the second frame has been read i'm going to assign this output to the frame 2 variable and let's show this frame 2 output we are good just run this that's it can you see between the frame one and frame two, you can notice a marginal difference. A car has been slightly moved in the second frame. Whereas in the first frame, you see this white lane line. This length and over the length over here, what you see, you can see a little difference. It's been reduced. That means the car has been traveled forward direction. Okay. So now you know how you have read frame by frame and assign the frame output that is the image output to a variable. So what is that our exercise for our today's class? We need to subtract the frame one minus frame two and take the foreground mask. That is exactly what we need to do. Let's do that. Let's command the line, extract the foreground mask. I'm going to apply the absolute difference of frame one and frame two and that result I'm going to assign it to the variable called foreground mask fg mask that's a name I'm going to provide 
and the function what we need to use for subtracting the frame 1 minus frame 2 that's called absolute difference and that is available from the OpenCV package cv2 dot absolute difference and within the parenthesis you provide the frame 1 what we have already extracted comma frame 2 we are done now we have extracted the foreground mask without applying the threshold let's print this image we know the command for printing that let's copy and name this fg mask let me call foreground mask and we are good let's run this code i just want to show this is the frame one and this is the frame two if you see between the frame one and frame two except the cost getting moved from one place to another place the remaining all kind of stand still no difference and that's why in the difference remaining all getting shadowed with block so it's very clear the background is identified with block color and the foreground will be identified with white as you see the white foreground is not that visible with the simple absolute difference function as you see in the diagram we need to subtract it after that we need to apply the threshold then you show it only then you will get the brighter white spots let's do that okay so let's close these outputs by pressing any key we are good so what i'm going to do i'm going to apply the threshold apply the threshold for increasing the white foreground okay so i'm going to apply the global threshold so what i do i'm going to use from opencv there is a threshold function this threshold function is going to return two parameters the first parameter is thresh value and the second parameter is the thresh image i'm not interested in the thresh value so i'm going to keep underscore and the second parameter i'm interested and that is the one which is going to return the thresh image so let's name the variable thresh equal to cv2 dot threshold within the parenthesis you need to apply the image that you want to apply the global threshold so what is that image we have the final one after we apply the absolute difference that is called fg mask fg mask you pass it and the second parameter what we need to pass is the thresh value i'm going to keep the thresh value starting with 50 and what is the third parameter the foreground color i'm going to keep it 255 and what is the fourth parameter that's the mode what is the mode i'm going to apply or type i'm going to use cv2 dot all in caps thrush binary okay now we got the thrush output so let me replace the foreground mask with the thrush output thrush we are good let's execute this code can you see the difference after applying the thrush the images are coming more brighter with white spots okay with this the method one exercise has been completed now i'm going to solve the same exercise with the built-in opencv package using the function background subtractor using either knn or mock2 let's see how exactly the opencv mock2 and knn is going to work in comparison with the manual absolute difference okay and before I show it on the other one, I just want to make sure to spot, you can see the background is completely blocked. It has not captured any of the other distracting images, only the car movements are traced. You can see there is one more car which is moving on the right side, as you see over here. 
everything else is kind of standstill and no difference and that's why the block is coming okay let's see the same with the method 2 exit this by pressing any key in order to apply the method 2 I show let me go back to the slide we need to use create background subtractor KNN and MOG2 let me copy this I'm going to initialize the background subtractor module here let me name initialize open CV background subtractor for KNN and MOG2 I'm going to show the demo for both KNN and MOG2 and whichever is suited for you you can use it I'm going to name the variable for the KNN background subtractor initialization as BS stand for background subtractor and KNN KNN okay equal to the one which we copied and similarly you copy this line and make it for one more and this you call it as MOG2 we are good I don't want to disturb the code over here what I do I just repeat this entire code for the method 2 copy this remove the newly added lines over here let's call this entire exercise as method 1 okay now I'm going to introduce a new cell and here I'm going to place it I'm going to call this as method 2 okay we are good so I have reinitialized the video capture let me take this set of lines paste it in the bottom and also we have initialized the background subtractor function for KNN and MOG2 as I said this needs a motion picture that means it needs more than one frame to read it or interpret it in the previous example manually I read frame by frame and assigned to the variable and I applied the absolute difference which works whereas in this case if I try to use the built-in OpenCV function background subtractor this is going to take the frame in a loop so that when it reads in the loop it's going to take from the previous frame to the next frame and it applies on its own the background subtraction what we did manually the reason is the variable what we initialized for the background subtractor BSKNN the apply command is going to take only one image to be passed you can't pass the two images for that reason you need to do it in a loop that means any video will have lots of frame inside it so we need to read frame by frame and that should be iterated through the loop only then the frames will be read continuously okay so what I'm going to do I will be introducing here while loop until I read all the frames how do I do that use the while command while and what is the variable we have assigned for the video capture it's width cap make it width cap dot is opened once you initialize the video capture that means the video is being opened if the video is opened that will return the value true or false so as long as it is true I'm going to read all the frame so what I need to do I have to read the frame by frame the frame read is going to return two values return comma frame equal to with cap dot read okay we are good reads the frame next frame after we read the frame what we need to do we need to apply to the background subtractor 
So we already have the background subtractor for KNN and MOG has been initialized. We don't need to do over here the manual subtraction. It is going to be performed within the background subtractor KNN module and MOG module. So let's apply to that function the frame. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the result set of the KNN is going to be called KNN underscore FG mask equal to copy this dot apply of you have to pass the frame extract the KNN method of foreground mask got it now I will repeat this command for the MOG2 and what is that MOG2 it should be replaced with MOG2 because that's the name I have provided over here and this one let me call it as MOG2 underscore FG mask great we have done the same exercise what we need to do next is we need to show the image using the I am show command cv2 dot I am show off you pass the foreground mask what has been extracted copy this name the variable knn method foreground mask pass it similarly you copy this command and show it for the MOG method okay MOG2 are we good let's label this as MOG2 I guess we are good so we are going to read this in a loop until it reads the last frame and show the images with the extracted foreground mask in both KNN and MOG. Let's see the result. Anything has been missed out? In this case, when I'm going in a while loop, I should have this key to be pressed to be passed inside the while loop. You can't keep it outside the while loop. If I go with the wait key, what happens? It's going to read frame by frame until I press key after key. I don't want to do that. Let it go on a loop until I press some key. The moment I press the key, it should come out of the loop. So what we need to do, we need to introduce a if condition and I will go for waiting any key to be pressed. In that case, you make a wait key of one and we are going to make an and condition and here we are going to say 0 x f f equal to ORD of within the single course Q until I press a key called Q the while loop will be continuously iterated the moment I press the key I am going to come out of the while loop we are good after i come out of the while loop i'm going to destroy all windows and then the video capture has been released i guess that's it let's run the code there were no errors the output has come and over here you see the difference the knn seems to be much better whereas the MOG is capturing even more detailed information. Can you see there are more white dots whereas in the KNN method you don't find that much. Otherwise pretty much the both the results are same. So this is the simple image segmentation using the built-in function from the OpenCV create background subtractor for KNN and MOG2.
Use the module whichever that best suits for you either KNN or MOG2 otherwise you can go on using the manual method with simple absolute difference. Let me bring the original image. So let me press a key Q to exit. Let me print the original frame. Let's copy this. Paste it over here and call this as original image or let me name as original video and this is the output I am going to show it over here. I am good. Let's run this. There you go. Can you see here the tree is getting moved left to right because of the wind blowing on the other direction. And if you watch very deep on this entire video you can see in the right side there are some grasses which is getting shaked because of the wind. And also you can see sometimes the lane lines also getting shaked because of the camera movement. So all this has been captured in the background subtraction in a moving window. We are good. Let me exit. The same I am going to show it with the manual method with the while loop iteration. I have not introduced the while loop. Let me introduce the while loop in the method 1. The entire method what I am going to do. I am going to iterate over here. After I read the first frame. From the second frame onwards, I want to introduce the while loop and move all this inside the while loop. In the while loop, I am going to read frame by frame because the frame 1 I already read and frame 2 I am going to read inside the while loop. And then I am going to find the absolute difference all these are okay. After I found the absolute difference, I need to assign the frame 2 to frame 1 so that the output will be swapped. When it comes the first time, the frame 1 was read outside the while loop and in the while loop I read the second frame, I found the difference. After I complete the first set of iteration, it goes on the loop until the last frame is read. So during the second iteration of the while loop, I need to make sure the frame 1 becomes the frame 2 and the frame 2 remains same and again I am going to repeat this operation frame 1 minus frame 2 and do the entire steps. Let me uh, assign the label frame 2 to frame 1 to continue the iteration until all frames are red. We are good. And the only change what I have to do is I have to remove the wait key. With any key to be pressed I should exit the loop. So let me do that. I will copy this line and replace it on a specific key called Q. That's all the change required on the method one to iterate through the loop until the last frames are read. I want to add one more check. Once all the frames are read on the open video, I want to make sure the loop was exit without any error. How do I do that? I said whenever I read the next frame, the result will be passed to the written one variable as well as frame, the output of the image. The return is going to hold true or false. So I'm going to introduce one line. Do a check. Check if end of frame has been reached. When the end of frame is reached, the return will be false. If not of return, I want to break.
from the while loop. That's all. Let's execute and see the output. Hooray! With the method 1, with absolute difference, we have exactly achieved as same as the method 2 on the moving video images. So with my analysis, what I can conclude, the method 1 seems to be more impressive because the background is completely masked with black and the foreground is coming up with white. Whereas in the method 2 with a built-in module for extracting the foreground mask using the background subtractor function, that brings lots of other noises in the background like the tree movements and other things. So I feel this is much much uh, stable. Again, I leave it to you guys to decide the best method for your project. With this, I'm going to end this session. I'll come back with another session with the live real-time problems. As you see in this video, there are many costs going in lane 1 and lane 2. I just want to count with a reference line drawn in the middle of the road. If any cars which is crossing the reference line count all the number of vehicles that cross the line and similarly on the lane 2. So that's the second exercise, the real time exercise I'm going to do in continuation to this episode 1 with all the code what we have done today. If you like this video, I request you to subscribe, share and comment. Until I come back with the second episode very shortly. This is Sarunan Vajravel signing off from One Touch BI. Goodbye.